Have you ever made a discovery using an art medium that just lit a fire under you and made you want to continue using that medium all the time? If it hasn't happened to you yet, start experimenting, start exploring, get yourself something to look forward to. It's a really fun experience. I find there's always times where I kind of take a dip, where I get kind of bored with whatever art supply or medium I'm using, and suddenly it's just not as exciting. And whether I find a new uh, manner of drawing, a new technique, a new thing to try drawing, or a new medium, it kind of helps bring back that joy and excitement of creating that. Oh, I really want to do this now. We always kind of need something fresh uh, to stay inspired, right? So that's kind of how, how it goes for myself. For this process, I am sharing kind of a discovery I've made with a medium. I am not a proponent of watercolor. I feel like the colors always turn out dull or I end up making kind of a mess. <laughs> it's really, I've always found it very difficult to control watercolors. <laughs> control problems, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so it happened that I've started to kind of grow with watercolors. I got a different watercolor set and I think that was the first stepping stone to coming out of my problem with watercolors because I realize now that the watercolors I had weren't very good and I don't really like to talk bad about art supplies. I feel like the supplies don't make the artist, the artist makes the supplies. <laughs> it was basically the watercolors I had were bad per se, but they just were very dull, the colors. So I got new watercolors and I'd been enjoying using those. And then I got these metallic watercolors from the same brand. And they're so fun. They're sparkly, they're vibrant, but maintain that metallic sheen. And I've just really enjoyed using them. One day I wanted to use these metallic watercolors, but I also kind of just felt like sketching in pen and it's actually this very same indigo pen I'm using for this character sketch. And I, I really wanted to use the pen, and I really wanted to use the watercolors, and I thought, oh, I wish I could just do both. And I was kind of sitting there wondering, well, this isn't like a fine point marker, it is a pen. Could this pen be waterproof? <laughs> well, I tested it out, and surprise, surprise, kind of gave it away in this footage, huh? But it is indeed waterproof. And so I've just been going crazy with making watercolor paintings all under these pen sketches. It's really interesting because the, the watercolors are kind of opaque, but still, you know, they're watercolor, so they're not that opaque. But because of it, they kind of go on top of the pen and dull the colors of the pen instead of removing the pen. If the pen weren't waterproof, that's what would happen. <laughs> but instead, they just kind of go over the pen. So it creates a nice vibrancy. And then if I want those darker lines, I can just go back over it with the pen. And it's just created results that I really quite like. So in this video process, I'm gonna kind of share just what I, what techniques I'm using as I'm painting with these metallic watercolors and going over them with my more vivid regular average Joe watercolors that have helped me grow and enjoying watercolors more. It's just nice to finally be able ha to have vibrant colors with watercolors. And now it comes the time to talk about the drawing. This was a random character sketch and basically the only idea I had backing this up was I wanted to draw a girl with a random curly swoop strand of hair kind of covering her face. I know, it's poetic. <laughs> Brought tears to my eyes just trying to say it. That was the extent of the idea. In my mind, I visualized her with purple hair, but as I sketched her with pen, it just, the indigo blue looked so good. So as I bring out now my non-metallic watercolors, I ended up painting the hair a dark blue. And even though I like the drawing, how it turned out and everything, as I was painting it, it just didn't sit right with me. I kind of just had some regrets where I thought, what if I had given her purple hair like I intended? Would it have been better? And because I couldn't really settle with the idea of not giving her purple hair, I end up trying to draw the character again, per se. I'm doing air quotes, don't know why, you can't see me doing that. <laughs> but 
I ended up kind of drawing the character again, but basically I only kept the curly swoop on the same side of her face from her hair. That's pretty much it. I kind of just deviated from that after <laughs> as I started sketching. So it ended up becoming its own thing, but if anyone were looking at it, they'd be like, hmm, she kind of likes to draw the same hair, but you guys know that wasn't the case. <laughs> For this character, I also added a little flowery thing on the side of her hair as well. I don't know, give it more variation. You can see I'm not using a pen to sketch this, which kind of would seem like it's defeating the purpose of what I've been saying at the beginning. However, I intentionally did this portrait sketch with a 3H pencil with the idea of demonstrating that you can do a pencil drawing and erase a lot of that pencil so it's very faint. Go over it with watercolors and then eventually bring that pen back again and make the watercolor painting more interesting, which I'm so glad that I do indeed bring the pen back because it, the painting, <sighs> I always struggle when I do pencil and then go over it with watercolor, which is why once I discovered I could paint watercolor over pen, it was like a whole new thing and I was just very excited about it because when I do it with pencil, it always just turns out kind of, it's not muddy per se, but it just turns out kind of blobby and it's just not as visually appealing and I think it's mainly because there's no stark contrast being created because watercolors are faint and there's no line work that can kind of differentiate different features of characters so it just makes it not as visually interesting. Now I'm moving on to painting the hair which as you can see I painted one side of it pink and the other side of it purple which I said I was going to make the hair purple which I am. Ignore the pink. <laughs> Basically, that's it started as pink to create the idea of that the character's being lit on the right side of her. So as I go further along this, I work harder and harder to make sure that becomes more apparent. And you'll see that as it goes. I'm now bringing in a metallic gold and I'm going over the hair with it. This really helped aid in creating that look and effect of the character being lit on the right side. Well, our right, her left. And it created almost this kind of like suns hitting it. So as I go along, I keep trying to add more purple and darker tones to the side of her face to create that shadow. However, once it was all painted, it just still, like I said, looked kind of blobby and messy, but that pencil was not visible. So I went over it with the pen and I just feel like it helped bring this character out all the more and it just made her look so much better. I, The interest. And then of course I used some fine point markers to kind of go around her and those I activated with water to kind of smear it around and make one big colorful thing. And I did use the fine point markers to also go over her to add some hatching and other textures to create more interest. And I did that with the other drawing as well. Anything to continue to add to make watercolor paintings more interesting, I will try to do. <laughs> it was always funny because when I first started learning to paint with watercolors, I would watch all these tutorials on how to paint with them and every time every tutorial whenever they'd make a watercolor painting they would go over it with paint or colored pencils or something and I was always so mad I'm like why can't anybody commit to the watercolors well at the same time I couldn't judge them because I couldn't commit to them either it just they have the they have their fun aspects and it's really fun to just kind of lay out those colors because it's like it's water but it's 
colorful and everything, you just don't get the same experience using anything that may resemble watercolor or be like paint like watercolor, but it's just, I don't know, it's not the same experience. And I think that's why over the years I've always tried to work on using watercolors. And you guys have seen, and um, I have quite a few videos where I really tried to learn and experiment with painting. And it's so interesting to see how much I've grown with that, but also, it's interesting to see how many videos I have of me painting because I, I don't feel like I do it very frequently, <laughs> but I document it quite a bit. But now I'm on to the next character and I used a red pen to sketch this one this time because I actually, I used the red pen as well. I used the blue pens and the red pens to sketch the characters and then put the watercolor on top. And this was a guy character kind of crouching down Basically, I just wanted to put a character in a non-standing pose and I didn't want to do a portrait again. I wanted to do a full body, non-standing, that could fit in the page and make the whole sketchbook spread come together. So that's kind of the explanation behind the pose. The guy, basically what I wanted to do was give a guy with short hair, but long layers kind of jetting out, a scarf, and that would be the extent of it. <laughs> As I finished laying out all the metallic watercolors, it was then t on to using just the regular watercolors and going over any aspects of the character that I wanted to be more vibrant, more dark. However, I did struggle a lot with the color scheme of this character because I had an idea in my head of what I wanted. But as you can see, the contrast just really isn't there. And so after working at it, working at it, I eventually had to bring in gouaches because it just wasn't quite where I wanted it. So I went over everything with orange yellow and yellow ochre and it pulled everything together perfectly. I really quite like the character. I would even want to draw him again. I can't make any promises. I've learned my lesson from the last video. <laughs> but it was overall just a really fun sketchbook spread and I'm so happy to be able to share just kind of what I've learned with using watercolors lately and just what I like to use them best with. <laughs> but here comes the finished spread now that I'm going over everything with red pen. Here it is! I'd like to thank you all for watching and may God bless you in your life and your art. Bye!